We've been following this major case of little Madeline Soto now since the beginning, since she was reported missing in Orange County in late February. Good afternoon. I'm Darlene Jones. And I'm Greg Wormuth. This is a look at the 13-year-old girl's picture. And investigators ultimately found her dead in St. Cloud. This was back in early March. Police arrested this man, Stephen Stearns, for her murder. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. Stearns is the boyfriend of Maddie's mother. We interviewed them both before law enforcement found the teen's body. Channel 9, Shannon Butler joins us live in studio for this breaking update. And Shannon, sources have told you the mother of Madeline Soto has not broken the law. That's right, and the interview with Soto takes place on February 27th, about 11.30 p.m., just after her daughter was reported missing. She has a hard time answering some of those questions, but sources tell me nothing so far she has done has been criminal. So at least for now, no charges will be filed. Jennifer Soto appears calm as she tells the Orange County detective the events surrounding her daughter's disappearance. She said at 11 p.m. that Sunday, just after her daughter's 13th birthday, she sent Madeline Soto and Stefan Stearns to bed together. Is it normal for both of them to sleep in the same room? Sometimes. When I, when I really need a good night's sleep, I will send them upstairs. Um, but when, uh, also a lot of times, we will sleep together in the king size bed, all mm -hmm. three of us. Or sometimes Stefan will go upstairs and in our bed alone. Um, so it just really depends on what's going on that night with our schedules and what we're doing. She said they have two roommates and another child that sleeps there sometimes and that Maddie's bedroom is downstairs in the living room. She told investigators she thought that her daughter was getting ready for school the next morning, but she never actually saw her. She said she got up and went to a doctor's appointment and then got back to the house about 11 a.m. When you got back, was Stefan here? I'm pretty sure he was, yeah. What was he doing? Uh, just sitting in my room at my computer desk on his phone. Okay. What did you guys do? We chatted for a little bit. I asked him what had happened because he had called me earlier mm -hmm. uh, at 10, pretty sure he called me around 10, 18. But according to investigators, that wasn't true because Stearns had already been seen driving out of the complex on video with the little girl slumped over in the front seat. Jen said it wasn't until after Madeline Soto did not come out of the school and was told she wasn't actually there all day that she started to worry. That's when I knew something was truly wrong. And I, I'm before that email or after that email, but I started panicking and freaking out mm -hmm. because she should have been to school. She should have made it. Jen's answers were hard to come by sometimes, and she told investigators she had taken medicine and was a little spacey, but nothing in this interview or any of the other evidence we received has given detectives a reason to charge her. So something else Jen Soto told the investigators, she said that Stefan Stearns did not go with her to pick up Madeline Soto at school because he said he had a flat tire. Now that's true. Well, at least the flat tire part, he changed that tire near the same location where Madeline's body was found. Now, Greg, something important here that it doesn't mean she'll never be charged. If investigators find something else that would warrant charges, they would do that. But at least right now, this is where we stand. So many parts of that interview, Shannon, so disturbing, including the little girl sleeping with her boyfriend and her on occasion at 13. We'll see what happens, if anything. And that entire interview with Jennifer Soto is more than 33 minutes long, so we have obviously couldn't show it to you here, but we are going through all of the details and what was shared with deputies, and we'll have more from this compelling breaking news that Shannon broke on Eyewitness News at 5 and at 6.